Recently, I checked out the 8GB version of the 9060 XT, you know, AMD's famous 1080p eSports GPU, that is officially advertised to be neither of those things, and instead is deceptively marketed on the back of the 16GB model. So yeah, that one. And as expected, in many of the more modern games using settings that would otherwise be fine with enough VRAM, the 8GB model was effectively broken, or at best, much slower than it should have been. This is bad for a few reasons. Firstly, in the examples we showed, we were unable to unlock the true performance of the GPU because it's bottlenecked by its VRAM, a thing that realistically should never happen with a brand new GPU. This becomes of significant concern when you consider the fact that it is very easy to show these issues today using a product that presumably anyone planning on buying will be keeping it for at least the next three to four years. But you know what isn't of significant concern? Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Ugreen and their MagSafe 100 watt two in one power bank. This desktop power bank allows 100 watts of fast charging via one of the three supplied USB outputs, enabling a 100% MacBook charge in just an hour and a half. It also offers a flip up 15 watt MagSafe dock for your MagSafe compatible devices and intelligent current matching to ensure more reliable battery safe charging. With the ability to charge four devices simultaneously, excellent build quality and compact design, this power bank is suitable for any and all of your mobile devices. We've been using Ugreen products in the office for a while now, and not only are they reliable, but they also offer great value. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. So in three to four years from now, you can expect that games are going to become increasingly demanding using more VRAM than they do today. We've already heard from game developers that 8GB GPUs have become a nightmare for them over the past few years, making it extremely difficult to optimize next-gen titles to work with such a severe hardware limitation. In almost all instances, they've had to waste a considerable amount of their development time optimizing games to work with 8GB GPUs. And yet, reading comments online, it appears that some gamers expect games to continue to evolve with these hardware restrictions in place. And despite all of this, both AMD and Nvidia are still pushing 8GB GPUs on the masses, so the situation continues to worsen. But the good news is, many gamers are now aware of the problem and are starting to push back. In fact, this VRAM issue is something a lot of gamers have been painfully aware of for quite a long time now. I'd say before most reviewers cottoned on, and this is because testing VRAM can be extremely difficult, and in many examples, a quick 30 to 60 second benchmark pass won't reveal the performance issues many of you face when playing games for extended periods of time. For example, in order to see performance related issues in Halo Infinite, on an 8GB GPU using the ultra settings at 1080p or 1440p, you generally have to play the game for an extended period of time, as it takes a bit of time to overwhelm the VRAM. That said, it doesn't take long for textures to go missing, but you do have to be on the lookout for those problems, and again, they don't appear in benchmark graphs. And something else us reviewers often overlook is the hardware configuration. For testing GPUs, you want to use the latest and greatest CPU in order to show the true uncapped graphics performance, and this is something we always do, as it is best practice. However, when it comes to VRAM, testing with the fastest CPU on the latest platform with high speed system memory is without question a best case scenario for exceeding the VRAM buffer. And I briefly demonstrated this in my 9060 XT 8GB video by running some tests on the Core i7-8700K, a processor that is limited to PCI Express 3.0 and uses slower DDR4 memory, and the results were pretty shocking. Therefore, today we're mixing it up a bit. We're still taking my high-end 9800X 3D test system, but we're going to use it to test PCIe performance. This means this video is isolating the PCIe bus and testing that specifically, giving us a clear idea of how much PCIe bandwidth can influence performance when dipping into system memory. I had considered using older CPUs to represent the PCIe 3.0 and 4.0 configurations, but doing so ends up with a lot of moving parts, and I really just wanted to measure the effects of the PCIe bandwidth. So I'm sticking with the 9800X 3D, but I will be manually adjusting the PCIe mode in the BIOS. This means I'm able to measure the performance of the 8GB 9060 XT using PCIe 3.0, 4.0, and 5.0, while everything else remains the same, and I'll be comparing that data to the 16GB 9060 XT using PCIe 3.0, and I'm really doing that to make a point. We could test it with 5.0, but I think 
testing the 16 gigabyte 9060 XT using PCIe 3.0 is more impactful. This data is extremely useful for those of you without a PCIe 5.0 enabled system, as many CPUs and platforms are still limited to PCIe 4.0 and even 3.0. So let's get into the testing. Starting with F125, we have the very high preset, the second highest quality preset in the game, though we'll also check out FPS performance using the high preset in a moment. Now what's interesting to note here is the 16 GB 9060 XT averaged 73 FPS in this test with 1% lows of 51 FPS. So that's decent performance and certainly very playable. Now using PCI 5.0, the 8 GB version was 18% slower, dropping down to 60 FPS, while we saw a 22% decrease for the 1% lows. And again, this is comparing the 8GB model using PCIe 5.0 to the 16GB model using PCIe 3.0. Now, if we downgrade the 8GB card to PCIe 4.0, performance tumbles, dropping by 30% to just 42 FPS. Then if we use PCIe 3.0, the same mode used by the 16GB model in our test, we're looking at just 35 FPS on average which is a 17% performance loss when compared to the PCIe 4.0 configuration and 42% slower than PCIe 5.0. And worse still, when using PCIe 3.0, the 8GB 9060XT is 53% slower than the 16GB model using the same PCIe bus interface. Or put another way, the 16GB model is 111% faster. Okay, so here's a look at F125 using the high preset, again at 1440p with quality upscaling. The 16GB 9060 XT is good for 190fps on average in our test, with 1% lows of 156fps, and this performance was achieved while in the PCI Express 3.0 mode. In comparison, the 8GB model was 11% slower using PCIe 5.0. However, when switching to PCIe 4.0, we see a further 12% performance downgrade to 149 FPS on average, and then another 13% performance loss when using PCIe 3.0. This means when both the 8 and 16 GB models are using PCIe 3.0, the 16 GB version provided almost 50% greater average frame rate performance, while the 1% lows were boosted by a massive 63%. And again, this is with the high preset at 1440p with quality upscaling. So very reasonable quality settings. This is three presets off the highest preset. And this means if you have an older PC, you absolutely need to make sure you get the 16 gigabyte card. Moving on to Monster Hunter Wilds. This game doesn't work on eight gigabyte graphics cards using the ultra preset at 1440p with quality upscaling. The 16GB card was good for over 60 FPS on average using PCIe 3.0, twice the performance we see from the 8GB card when using the same PCIe mode. But even with PCIe 5.0, the 8GB model struggles with terrible frame time performance, resulting in 1% lows of 2 FPS. And what's interesting to note here is that the increased PCIe bandwidth did boost the average frame rate of the 8GB model, but it also reduced the 1% lows in the process, creating more stuttering. It appears as though this is a consequence of rendering more frames overall while still running out of VRAM. The takeaway here being that PCI bandwidth can't solve the issues of the 8GB 9060 XT in this title, even when it has all 16 lanes available. Spider-Man 2 plays exceptionally well at 1440p with upscaling on the 16GB 9060 XT. We saw 112 FPS on average in our test with 66 FPS for the 1% lows. That made it 26% faster than the 8GB model when using PCIe 5.0, or 38% faster when looking at the 1% lows. However, if we switch the 8GB model to PCIe 4.0, we see a massive 20% decline in performance, and then an even bigger 27% performance loss when dropping down to PCIe 3.0, as the average frame rate dropped to just 52 FPS. This means when playing Spider-Man 2, in a PCI Express 3.0 system, using the settings shown here, the 16GB version of the 9060XT will deliver at least 115% greater average frame rate performance and 175% greater 1% lows. But even if you have a PCI 4.0 system, the 16GB model will still be at least 58% faster for the average frame rate and 74% faster for the 1% lows. 
Moving on to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. In this test, we're again at 1440p with quality upscaling using the very high preset. The 16 gb 9060 XT using PCI 3.0 was able to average 128 FPS with a 1% low of 97 FPS. So excellent performance overall. When compared to the 8 gb version under the same conditions using PCI 3.0, the 16 gb model was 103% faster when comparing the average frame rate and 155% faster for the 1% lows. Upgrading to PCI 4.0 improved the 8GB model's performance by 30%, but even so, the 16GB card was still 56% faster. Then when going from PCI 4.0 to 5.0, the 8GB model saw a further 32% performance boost, and now it is very usable, despite the 16GB model still offering around 20% better performance. Next up, we have Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and here the 16 gb 9060 XT using PCI Express 3.0 was able to render 135 FPS on average with a 1% low of 113 FPS. So again, very good performance overall. Now, under the same conditions, the 8 gb model, again using PCI 3.0, was only able to average 45 FPS, making the 16 gb card 200% faster and 223% faster when comparing the 1% lows. Increasing the PCIe bandwidth with PCIe 4.0 improved the average frame rate of the 8GB model by a massive 44%, allowing for 65 FPS on average, which is still less than half the performance seen from the 16GB model. Then with PCIe 5.0, we saw a further 42% performance increase, and now the overall performance was good. Even so, the 16GB card was still 47% faster, and again, it's able to provide this performance boost while using PCI Express 3.0. Dragon Age The Valguard doesn't play well on 8GB graphics cards using the Ultra preset at 1440p, even with the help of upscaling. And regardless of the PCI Express mode used, performance was bad. When using PCI 3.0, for example, the 16GB model was 174% faster, then 70% faster when switching the 8GB model to PCI 4.0, and finally 31% faster when using PCI 5.0. But the 1% lows are still a disaster on the 8GB model, regardless of the PCIe mode used. Now wrapping up this testing, I installed these GPUs in my Ryzen 7 5800X 3D test system, which is limited to PCI Express 4.0, as that was the highest spec interface the AM4 platform supported. What's interesting to note here is that the 16GB version of the 9060 XT delivered virtually identical performance using either the 5800X 3D or 9800X 3D, as the results are limited by the GPU's compute performance, and nothing else. So using either of these processes, you can unlock the full potential of the 9060 XT, at least using these quality settings. The 8GB model though, as usual, is more of a mixed bag. Using PCI 4.0 with the 9800X 3D, the 16GB model was already 27% faster than the 8GB version, but when we move to the 5800X 3D, it ends up delivering 44% more performance. This is because we saw a further 11% performance regression on the AM4 platform, and this is likely due to the use of slower DDR4 3600 memory. However, it is worth noting that this issue isn't always seen. Take Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, for example, here the 8GB 9060XT using PCI 4.0 was much the same when paired with either the 5800X 3D or 9800X 3D, though the 1% lows which were already bad on the 9800X 3D were even worse when using the 5800X 3D. So the takeaway here being that at best you will see the results provided by the 9800X 3D when using an older slower CPU with PCI Express 3.0 or 4.0, but more often than not, the margin between the 8GB and 16GB models will be even greater. So there you have it. As we saw previously with the Core i7-8700K, you absolutely do not want to run out of VRAM on a PCI Express 3.0 system, even when all 16 lanes are available. Now, those of you with PCI 4.0 systems, you will fare a lot better. But even as we saw with PCI 5.0 enabled, you can't always avoid serious performance hits. In virtually all the games tested, the 8GB 9060XT was unusable when limited to PCI 3.0. F125 using the high preset was really the only exception here, though performance overall was still significantly down on the 16GB card. 
And this all points to the fact that performance in general, even with more modest quality settings, can be much lower on these older platforms as you only have to be exceeding the local video memory capacity ever so slightly to see serious performance issues. Issues that would largely go unnoticed on more modern platforms. Another problem to consider is the fact that many motherboards, especially the more budget focused boards, will reduce the PCIe lane count to the primary slot when the secondary slot is in use. So if you install quite literally anything in the secondary PCIe Time 16 slot, both the primary and secondary PCIe Time 16 slots will run in a Times 8 Times 8 configuration, and this is extremely common. Doing so will halve the available PCIe bandwidth to the graphics card. For example, in a PCIe 4.0 system when all 16 lanes are available, there is about 64 gigabytes of total bandwidth. But with just 8 lanes, that configuration gets halved to 32 gigabytes, which is the same amount of bandwidth seen when using PCIe 3.0 times 16. Essentially, what all of this means is you never want PCIe bandwidth to be a performance limiting factor. You don't want it to have a chance to influence performance. And the only way to ensure this is to have enough VRAM. And at this point in time, 16 gigabytes does look to be enough VRAM today and likely into the future, at least the realistic lifespan of these products. But clearly eight gigabytes just isn't enough as we're able to demonstrate that today. Still having the full 16 lanes available does help the eight gigabyte 9060 XT quite a bit. So I'll be redoing all of this testing next week, but with the 5060 Ti eight gigabyte to see how that model performs when limited to PCI 3.0 and 4.0 as that model does only have eight lanes available. There is no 16 lane version. So that should make for a pretty interesting comparison. In the meantime, if you appreciate all of the testing that went into this video, then please do give it a like, subscribe for more content because I, like I said, there's more of this coming up. And of course we have other non VRAM related content coming up on the channel. You will see some of that next week as well. But yeah, you can also join patrons a thing if you want to get more access to hardware box goodness. We have a discord server, monthly live streams, Q and A stuff and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.